Hey there, everybody. P.T. Pop here with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And tonight I just want to address a couple of questions people ask me about why I can't find a better job or something that makes more than $15 an hour. Stay tuned. So, last night I released a video about quitting my most recent call center job, which was back in January. And a couple of people asked me, like, why can a guy who appears to be as intelligent as I am can't find a better job than something making 15 bucks an hour? And I'll tell you, this is why. Number one, in 2002, I was offered a job in telecommunications, which is the industry I worked in at the time. I turned the job down and that's back when I lived in Ohio. I still live in Ohio. I live in Ohio now, but back then I was living in Ohio, I turned down a job and I moved to Phoenix, thinking I had like 12 years of telecom experience. It would be no problem to find a job in Arizona in telecommunications. Well, I moved to Arizona and I never found, well, I got one job in telecom that was with Verizon Wireless, but that's not really a telecom job. That was a, a shit job, shit call center job. I could only find call center jobs for whatever reason. For some reason, my, my telecom experience didn't transfer over, even though I had applied for tech, technology positions. Plus, the technology world changed virtually overnight. Like between 2002 and 2004, the technology world had been completely turned upside down. I worked at Verizon Wireless Call Center. I worked at the Wells Fargo Call Center. And then I went into business for myself. Now in the corporate world, when they see a resume, now in the corporate world, when they see a resume with self-employment, corporations don't like it because they don't know if it's real. Even if I have a tax ID, even if I have a website, even if I have um, business cards and all that stuff, it doesn't transfer over into a legitimate business because there's no way they can really verify my business, even though they could, but it's not the kind of thing that they can go, they look at, the, the, you would think the corporation would go, look at this guy, he's a photographer, uh, a digital artist, he's a musician, he can do marketing, he can do social media, he can do all of these things that we need him to do, but they don't look at it as legitimate because they didn't do it for an established business that's, you know, nationally known or something like that. Plus, when a corporation sees that the majority of your professional experience after a certain period of time in your life is strictly call centers, call center jobs are considered to be, they're really considered to be the, the bottom of the barrel jobs in the company. These are not entry level jobs. These are like basement level jobs that they hire people in that used to work at McDonald's. Most of the people you find employed in call center positions are not educated. They're not skilled. They have no real polished skills. Even though I do, um, when corporations see call center, call center customer service, call center technical support, because they, they, they think that most people who worked in call centers are flippity gibbets or scatterbrained or goofy or weird. Working in call centers for a variety of years where I didn't work at any one place for, well, I worked at Wells Fargo for about five years. That's still not long enough. They want to see an established track record with, with promotions and stuff like that. And I never got promoted at Wells Fargo. I didn't even try for promotion. I just went and I sold home equity lines of credit at a Verizon. I was there two years and you know, I, I hadn't planned on staying there. So, you know, I was going to business for myself and I was going to school. So, so my track record, they see is spotty. They see I worked in call centers and they see I'm in business for myself. So that compounded with the fact that I moved from Phoenix where there's 10,000 companies in the Phoenix metropolitan area, which they call the Valley out there, to Cleveland where there's nobody. There's no businesses here. And there's no jobs here. There's no decent white collar jobs that pay a, a living wage. And the only way you get into these jobs in this area of the country is if you have an inside connection. If you know somebody that works in one of the big corporations and they say, hey, yeah, this guy Pete, 
bring him in here for an interview. He's a good guy. Now, I had one friend that tried that a couple times with me, but right before the last time he did, he, he got fired or something. And I don't know what happened to him. He, he tried hard to get me into a couple places, and it didn't work out. I didn't want the job anyway. And the, the biggest companies here are like the Cleveland Clinic, which is a, like the second best hospital in the world. But everybody here in this area is trying to get into the Cleveland Clinic, like everybody. Everybody works there. And it's not just for doctors and nurses. There's a lot of admin people. There's a lot of staff and back office positions. But everybody's applying for them. It's like trying to get into Amazon now or trying to get into Apple and things like that. The next biggest company that employs people here is Progressive Insurance. And I worked at Progressive Insurance in Phoenix in, in their call center for like a month. I was in training. And it was so awful, I just resigned. The, the training was just so boring. I, I can't do auto. I just can't do auto. Auto insurance. Car insurance, you may as well just talk to me about the chemical and, you know, biological composition of house paint. Plus, I'm in a very depressed area of the country, and there's no jobs, and I don't have a network here. And the people that I do know in the business world here um, have been retired for like 20 years. They don't have the connections anymore. So I'm kind of like stuck. It's not like, you know, I would try for marketing, but most places, if I apply for a marketing job, we'll just see call center customer serve, service. Even though if I put my Skating Bear Studios on there that I've done the marketing, I've done the public relations, I've done all the advertising, I've done all the, all the budgeting, I've done all, the, all of that stuff, they don't care. They really don't. And it's almost, it's an uphill battle trying to get a job in this town. But the other thing that's keeping me out of a better job is as I've gotten older, and this, this might come with age, I don't know if everybody wakes up to this fact, but I don't like corporate America. I am not a fan of working it anymore because you're basically trading time for money to push a product that you may or may not believe in. And most of the people, I'd say almost all the people I met in corporate world, I just didn't like. I really, not supervisors, just, you know, there, there's a lot of phony people in the, super, in the corporate world. A lot of incompetent people, they get put into positions of authority. And because they become a manager or they become a director or they become a vice president, you know, they act like they're all that in a bag of chips. You know, I saw a lot of illegal things going on in the corporate world. I saw a lot of things going on that I didn't like and didn't approve of, and I spoke up about it. I wasn't like Norma Ray or anything, but I'm not real fond of the corporate world. I, I have gotten to a place in my life where I like who I am. I like the things that I do and the things that I create. I, I want to have a living where I'm making money creating things that I believe in and I feel strongly about. And I can't feel strongly about, um, you know, Kamanawana Lee and Morton's widgets that they're promoting. And their widgets may cause cancer in gerbils and kitty cats, but I've got to come up with a marketing campaign to promote this product that I may not believe in or is insidious. It's not, you know, I don't have a bad background. I don't have a police record. I don't have, I've never been fired from a job. I've never been disciplined. Um, you know, I've been written up in call centers and stuff like that, but that's not being disciplined. I, you know, I show up to work early, I'll stay late, you know, I'll do everything that's legal and above board. But I'm just sitting up here watching live PD again. It's Saturday night, it's about 20 after midnight here in the land of Cleveland. And uh, so if you like my videos, give them a thumbs up, give me a shout out, say hello. Thank you for those of you who said I'm intelligent. <laughs> That's the nicest thing anybody has said in a long time. So, um, believe it or not, corporations aren't always looking for intelligent. They're looking for obedient work workers, obedient worker bees who don't have a mind of their own. They wanna they wanna see results quickly without any questions asked. They wanna wind them up and go, I am marketing. I am advertising. That That's what corporate America is. And if you show any signs of thinking outside the box or walking outside the lines or you're trying to do something that's a little bit different, they look at you as a potential troublemaker. 
The minute you cross the threshold of that company, you walk through their door to work for them, you forfeit your rights as, Amer as an American citizen. And I know that sounds extreme, but you do because you have to talk they want to, you have to talk the way they want you to talk. You dress the way they tell you to dress. You sit where they tell you to sit. You go to the bathroom when they tell you to go to the bathroom. You um, go to lunch when they tell you to go to lunch. You take breaks when they tell you to go to breaks. You can't do certain things outside of work. You can't dare have um, a social life outside of work that's alternative or crazy or weird because they'll fire you. They'll find a ways to get rid of you. So if you're gay or transgender or any type of sexual alternative lifestyle, it'll be they'll run you out of town real quick. They'll run you out of their business. So there you have it. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Bye.